Hey there, 5 1 Youth, Pastor Jordan, back for the third installment of our How to Read the Bible series. With this quarantine going on, I know all of us can find 10 to 15 minutes a day to go to a quiet place and study the scriptures on our own. This series of videos is designed to give you some guidelines to help you read the Bible in fresh and engaging ways to deepen your relationship with God. The methods that I'm teaching in these videos can give you the confidence to approach scripture on your own and open up a whole new level of intimacy between you and the Lord. Studying the Bible on our own is so important in our Christian lives. It is foundational. If you commit to this, you will be amazed to see how a little bit every day can have a huge impact on your life. So please, I'm exhorting you. I know you have the time. Commit to this. Make reading the Bible part of your daily routine, and you'll see how God can bring Scripture to your mind when you need it in your life. Maybe you have a friend who's going through a difficult season and they need an encouraging and uplifting word. Or perhaps you're faced with a challenging decision and you need some wisdom and guidance about how to proceed. If you've studied the Bible, the Holy Spirit will bring verses to your mind that will speak directly into whatever situation you find yourself in. And you'll be so grateful you did. The Bible is a treasure box of wisdom and life. Whenever you're challenged by something, you can turn to Scripture and it'll give you some guidance about how to get through it. And if you've studied it, it'll come to you through the Spirit on its own. So with that introduction about why reading the Bible is so important, let's turn to our Bible study method for today, which is called the APPLE method. APPLE is an acronym that stands for each one of the steps this Bible study will take you through. A stands for attributes of God. P stands for promises of God. The second P is for principles of life. L is leave it behind, and E is examples to follow. We will explore each one of those steps more in depth in a moment, but as always, when we study the Bible, we want to pick a full passage, so that way we get the entire surrounding context so we know we're receiving what the author intended to communicate. And secondly, we're going to pick a passage from the Gospels, because the Gospels focus on Jesus and their stories, which makes them easier to understand. So for our Bible study today, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, and it reads, At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So now that we've read the passage, we can begin with our first step, which is A, attributes of God. And what we mean by attributes of God is who God is. What can we learn about God's character through this passage? And so in the passage we just read, we can learn a couple things. One is that we worship a God who reveals spiritual truths to infants before he reveals them to the wise and intelligent. This is a really interesting attribute of God because we might think it would make more sense for the religious scholars, the experts, to be able to have access to these spiritual truths. But Jesus defies our expectations and says, no, little children, infants, they have a better sense of these spiritual truths than the most wise and intelligent people. It's a very fascinating attribute of God, and it's one that's worth pondering. Some other attributes of God we can learn from this passage are that he is gentle and humble in heart. We worship a God who left heaven and the security and the glory of the heavenly realm to become a human being born in a manger to suffer and die for us. That is humility. And we worship a God who, even as people were persecuting him and killing him, he prayed for them and he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is gentleness. And so in this passage, Jesus reminds us that he is gentle and humble in heart. And those are some key attributes about who God is. So after we've looked at a couple of those attributes, we can move on to the next step, which are the promises of God. Read the passage again. We won't do it in the video for the sake of time. And then ask, what are the promises that God makes to me through this passage? 
In this passage from Matthew, some promises are that if we come to Jesus when we're weary and carrying heavy burdens, he will give us rest, and he promises that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We focus on the promises of God because they are secure. Life can be so uncertain and chaotic at times, but the promises of God never change. We can fall back on them when we're feeling overwhelmed, and they can give us that sense of comfort because God is faithful, and those promises that he makes will always come through. And so when we remember the promises of God, it helps us deal with the uncertainties of life. After we've looked at those promises, we can move on to the third step, which are the principles for life. You'll read the passage again and now ask, how can I make this pas passage relevant to me? How can I live out this passage in practical ways in my day-to-day -day life? So for me, when I look at this passage, it reminds me that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus says, And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. If I want to know God, I have to know Jesus. He is the only way that anyone knows the Father. This is so important to be reminded of because it's a central truth of our faith. And so when I look for guidance and when I look for ways to get close to God, I need to remember to turn to Jesus. Another principle for life is that when I'm weary and I'm carrying a heavy burden, I can go to Jesus for rest. Jesus is our savior. He is our refuge. He's our friend. And when life gets out of control, when it's just too much, we can turn to him and he will give us restoration and restore us to the place where we can deal with whatever it is that life is throwing at us. This is such a key and important practical way to live out our faith. In those times when we're overwhelmed and life is too much, we turn to Jesus, we lay our burdens at his feet, and we wait for him to restore us. And so after we've looked at those principles for life, we can move on to the next step, which is leave it behind. And what this step is about is confronting those darker areas of our lives through the passage. Maybe it's a sin that we're struggling with. Maybe it's hurt feelings or resentment that we've held on to from the past. Maybe it's a false belief that we've allowed to you know, take over our minds. Whatever it is, we allow the passage to speak into those darker areas to begin transforming them. So for me, when I read this passage, it reminds me that I struggle with intellectual pride. I have two postgraduate degrees, so it's really easy for me to overvalue being a smarty pants. But Jesus says it's not the smarty pants who get the spiritual wisdom, it's the little children. Jesus says he, God reveals himself more to infants than he does to the learned and wise. And this is a hard word for me to accept because I often think, well, I'm so smart. I'm supposed to know, you know what God wants. But Jesus is saying, no, you need to be more like a little kid. You need to be more like a baby than you need to be like a college professor or something. And so this passage confronts me with my own intellectual pride, and it tells me I need to let that go. The key is whenever you read a passage is to let this um, speak into an area that you're struggling with. Let it challenge you. Let it confront you and pray that God can give you the strength to let it go because it's essential to let go of those things that are holding us back if we want to grow in our faith. And now we can move to the final step of the Apple method, which is examples to live by. So we read the passage one more time and now we ask, what is the picture that God is painting for us in this passage that we can imitate? How can we follow the example of whatever it is that's going on in this passage? And the one from Matthew that we've read, I think an example is that Jesus is humble in heart and that he's gentle. I want to follow the example of Jesus and that means I need to learn gentleness and I need to learn humility. I need to be more intentional about how I treat other people and myself. I need to pray for gentleness because I can't just do it on my own. I need God to help me. I also need to pray for humility. Like I shared, I struggle with intellectual pride and it's only through God that I can get over this. I pray that God will give me a humble heart so that I can follow the example of Jesus. Whatever it is, look for your, in your own personal life, what are the examples that the passage is following, telling you to follow? And then pray that God will give you the strength to follow them. All right, and so that's the Apple Bible study method. It's five steps, and to recap, the first one is A, attributes of God. What does the passage teach us about who God is? What do we learn about God's character through the passage? The P are the promises of God. What are the promises that God makes to us that we can fall back on that are secure when life seems so chaotic? 
The second P are the principles of life. How can we live out this passage in practical ways in our day-to-day -day life? Next is leave it behind. What are the areas of our lives that this passage is calling us to leave behind? Whether it's sin, hurt, or false beliefs, we just ask that God would give us the strength to leave those things behind. Lastly, what are the examples to follow? How does God paint a picture of the example of a righteous life that we need to live into through this passage? Make it relevant to you. And so if you do each one of those steps, you will have completed an Apple Bible study method, and I hope it brings you closer to the Lord through your study of Scripture. I really appreciate you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.